Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second half of our double hit tonight on the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network. 108 Stitches Baseball Talk is where it's at. Now I'm going to go ahead and let you know the crew. We got Jacob Christner. Welcome back, Jacob. Hey, what's going on? George Icorn, GE, we bring good things to life. All right, go ahead. <laughs> had to do that. Oh, yeah, thank you. Go old school that. with that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> what's that? Go old school, school with that one. We bring good oh. things to life. Yeah, that's okay. I'll go old school, new school. Who cares what school? Yeah. We're going to school. <laughs> and Jordan Long has been our staple here on 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. Always love his insight about the diamond doings. Thank you for having me again, Scott. You're, you're very welcome. And Eric Katz. Okay. Here's Eric. Good to see you. Great to see you, too. So, All right. Well, you know what? We only have three topics, and we have a really special one after that. So... And Jacob knows where I'm coming from, and the rest of you guys are going to know too. But you know what? Where Over the week, I, I had an opportunity <laughs> to see the Marlins and the Yankees on Sunday. But boy, what a series it was! You know, we know the Yankees took the first game nine to four on Friday night, but boy, was it interesting <laughs> on Saturday when Sandy Alcantara threw a complete game in Miami's three to one win on, as I mentioned, Saturday. And, of course, on Sunday, despite six solid innings, Garrett Cole obviously uh, watched the Yankees' bullpen implode as Miami scored five runs in the ninth inning to earn an 8-7 to seven triumph, winning two of three games. It was Miami's 31st comeback win of the year. Also, Miami won at the gate at Lone Depot Park, a record for a three-game series, 100,001. This could be... I think this could lead the Marlins to the playoffs. I really do. I mean, you need one big signature win all year. And let's not kid ourselves that the Marlins bested the Yankees in the 2003 World Series for which Miguel Cabrera and company was in. So, Jacob, what are your thoughts about what took place over the weekend down here in Miami? Well, you know something? It's like you think about the first half when we talked about. We've been 12, 10, 12 over 500, still about seven out of Atlanta. But they were rolling. It was looking at. Then they struggled. Then they struggled a bit. And you wonder if there's going to be a complete collapse. I mean, they got to about three under, five, three over 500, excuse me. They got to about three over 500. Then you get to the Yankees. And then they lose the first game. Right. And then you win the second. But then, they, then you, then the, pot, the Miami of the past, in the last couple of years, especially being down five. You know, being down four or five, you know, being down four. With that whole thing, with the chance, go one, two, three, and out. That was just their thing. This team, it doesn't matter if they make the playoffs, though. They can go 81 and 81. I mean, Kim Ng built the team. She's going to she's probably getting herself an extension now. She's built something for a future that's going to lead to 90 wins, 100 wins, 95 yeah, especially with the with the uh, people that they have right now, Alcantara areas, with these guys, you can build around that, right. and that's going to that is going to be huge for the future. It doesn't I mean they didn't make it as a bonus, but it's it's the future that you're looking at now. You can go you can go after, and I'm just saying this. You can put yourself in the running with something like this for a guy like um, Otani. It is Miami after all. So, who knows? Okay. All right. Well, that's fair. Okay, George? Yeah, it was very impressive. Very impressive. The Marlins taking two out of three. Like you said, Scott, it's like a signature win, a signature series for them so far this year. Um, we all know the Yankees have had so many struggles this year. But still, you're able to do that. And like you said, drawing over 100,000 fans. That is the magic number in any weekend series. Well, possibly not New York. Of course, they have a bigger stadium. But for, for the stadiums like in Detroit and Miami and even Coors Field, I mean, when you can draw over 100,000 for three games, you're doing something damn good. Because I remember many times the Tigers struggled to get that many people, uh, but they were able to do so when they had winning teams. So for all the reasons Jacob just mentioned, great young talent, good manager, good coaching staff, Good future for the Marlins. I think it was a fantastic series for baseball down in South Florida. A fantastic weekend. I'm glad. Okay, turn over to Jordan. You know, you look at this series, and 
the Yankees, you know, won one, and then obviously the Marlins won two out of three. But look at the last game, down that much to come back to score five runs. I mean, like you were saying, Scott, this is a team that wants to get the playoffs. You need to have a signature win. This right. could be their signature win to boost them into a playoff position. I know the Yankees aren't the Yankees of the past, but it's still a team that is above 500 who is still trying to make some noise in the American League wildcard standings, but at least the Marlins were, you know, they needed this win and the series win to, you know, say that this is a playoff team. We are for real. Okay, Mr. Yankee. <laughs> I have no choice. All right, Eric, what's your take on what happened over the weekend? Well, if you care to. No, I will. No, I will. I could. And probably... By the way, before you say anything, there, Skip Schumacher. I hated to see Don Mattingly go, but Skip Schumacher, first year manager, has done a pretty good job. Go ahead. Eric. Oh, one hundred percent. Skip Schumacher was. You know, I personally thought it was a great hire when they made the hire because he was cup because he had spent all that time in the St. Louis Cardinals organization where he knows how to put together a t- a team on the field. He knows how to develop a team and put put a core in place and ultimately develop the players around him to get that core going. That's it, it's kind of the Cardinals kind of have the same philosophy as as the as the Marlins do now because now with Kim being in charge, the Marlins actually have a direction. <clears throat> they never had that under under the the regime of Jeff of Jeffrey Luria and, and David Sampson. They just never had it. They would think they're trying to develop a minor league thing. Then they would go out and sign a bunch of free agents, thinking that would get them over the top. They kind of lucked into a World Series in two thousand and three where they just happened to. They happened to like, you know, the, the previous regime before them happened to make up some trades of some guys that turned out to be pretty good down the stretch before they, they inevitably enough fire sailed the whole thing like the Marlins have been known for doing. Um, but, you know, I think now with Kim Ng, they actually have a direction. They're dedicated toward player development. They're willing to add when necessary, which, you know, some they were, they were able to add Jorge Soler. I know Avisael Abis, Garcia is not working out there, but... You know, but you know they were able. But again, they were able to add him and kind of see if he'd fit in the core, which right now he doesn't. They get they've developed a really, really good pitching staff. I mean, yeah, Alcantara is not the Alcantara of last year, but still, you know, you have a you have an ace like pitcher at the top of your at the top of your rotation, and you also have a young Yuri Perez who's just dynamite. It's also allowed Lazardo to really to really step in there and and make and be able to um, be a solid contributor to that to that rotation. And then also they were able to kind of make the moves down the stretch to get David Robertson, which not going to be a flashy, not, not a flashy move, but still a move where, you know, a move where, you know, you get yourself a pretty good closer who just gets the job done. Nope. No harm, no foul. But overall though, with, you know, the, the crowd and I think baseball this year has just done a fantastic job of just coming back. It's been, it's been kind of lagging and struggling for the longest time. But I think, you know, I read something somewhere saying baseball attendance was up 9.3%. I think part of that, too, is the new rules where, you know, there's constant action, which that's just what the that's just what the generation now that goes to the ballpark more often than not, more often than not want. They want constant action. And I think um, that that's part of it, too. And also, you know, with the Marlins, you know, I think I think eventually you're I mean, part of it is, is it's not totally on the Marlins. Part of it is just the location of the stadium where, you know, Michael K made this great analogy where. Imagine the Deegan in New York City, five miles five miles away from the ballpark. That you can imagine, as some of you who have been in New York or have lived in New York or whatever, you could probably you could probably use your imagination on how big of a disaster that would be. That's the Marlins situation right now with hmm. the location of the stadium, where you know they were kind of they were kind of boxed in there, but neat, wanted to stay in Florida. But they, but you know, you have. You have to know, though, that you know the Mar. I think the Marlins are putting together something special on the field. I think it will. I think people, inevitably enough, will start to come to the ballpark because this is not the Jeffrey the Jeffrey Luria Marlins anymore, where the guy would, where the guy defrauded a county, and then would just spend just to spend, wouldn't do anything with his minor league system, thinking mm. just throw something at the wall and hope it sticks, which inevitably enough it would fall off the wall. And his team was his team did did nothing after two thousand and three. But uh, hey, Eric, I wanted to say this real fast. Also, I wanted to bring this. You want to know how gutsy it was to put Kim? I'm just saying, I would drive King. You know how gutsy it was to do it during the time when they did. They had just won 
a playoff series, you know, against the Cubs. It was I know it was the bubble series, but it was still they won a series, got themselves improved with the original GM. They put her in right in the middle of complete and utter strife. Complete strife. You know, it was in during it was there was the riots, the everything, the Me Too's, everything was going at once. It put her it to the world that you'd see online, it made it just look like a diversity hire, everything like that. She overcame it. Well, I I agree because number one, I like even minus minus all the political unrest and all that, I like the hire to begin with because she's more than qualified to do the job. She was, 30 years. Yes, she's been in she worked for the league office. She worked for the Yankees at one point as their assistant GM. And I believe she won a I believe she won a World Series ring or two with the Yankees. And she was a big part, she was a big part of that decision making, I believe, with either with I think um, Bo, either Bob Watson or Brian Cashman. The, the, it doesn't matter, but still she was in the, she was in those meetings about who to get. And she, you know, I I like the hire to begin with. You know, Michael Hill was not long for that job. Derek Jeter just kept him because he had no choice but to keep him because when COVID hit, you know, everybody put every, every, I think you could probably argue every single business in the world put on a hiring freeze and Derek Jeter had no one else to go to. So he's like, you know, cause originally he was trying to gut out the entire Luria Sampson regime, like everybody in that front office, including, you know, for better or worse, Jeff Conine, Mr. Marlin. I, I did. I didn't like the hiring, but I'll admit this. It wasn't because of her. I've known just as much as you about her uh, her past and how good she is. I wonder on the White Sox or someone that with a, um, you know, I, I didn't wonder in a Miami where you could give any excuse to the um, sandbagger and say when they don't give anything. I didn't wonder. I wonder on the White Sox or someone classic to give that a shot. But I'm glad Miami's working out. All right, let me go to the let me go to the chat room, okay? I love the conversation. Eric, you want to say one more thing yes. before I go to the chat room? Go ahead. I mean, you know, as far as Miami went, I mean, it's not like Kim Ng. It's not like you know other people, you know, other women, whatever, were hired out of nowhere just because oh, it's a diversity hire, blah blah blah. No, Kim Ng had had conversations with other teams before to be their general manager, so she wasn't a complete unknown, and she had been around the league, as you said, Jacob, over thirty years. You know, she's more than qualified to do the job. I think that. I think under the right ownership, which the Sher- which right now is um, Bruce Sherman, I think Bruce Sherman has done a good job at allowing her to really stretch out. Would it have happened under Stamps and Luria? I don't think so. Right. Even if right, she was hired. Let's go to the chat room. First of all, I'll just put them up. George Icorn, you're going to read them. All right, kneecap biting. Good evening. You too. Next. George. All right. Miami needs to just play slightly above 500 ball the rest of the way. Then who knows? I disagree. Okay. Yeah. And where we go? Cubs are getting strong. Also, the Reds. And Candy, are thank you, Reds. Candy, for joining us. Oh, she's got a final score here, folks. Miami five to one over the Houston Astros. They're also and in the wild card right now, too. Look, they got the final no, spot. All right, Derek. Right right hold on. Okay, if the season ends, goal. there you go. If the season <laughs> ended today, Candy says the Marlins would be in with the last wild card spot, leapfrogging the Cubs and the Reds. There you, you know, go, with Eric. The balance, with the balance that team has, both because I think I think I originally I didn't like the move when they traded for Josh Bell. I thought it was you know considering what he had done in Cleveland, he had been pitiful in Cleveland. But you know he's actually been. I think the change of scenery has actually helped them. He's actually given them some pop over at first base. And so I think that the trade, you know, it was a trade that I didn't like at first on, at, when it was made, but, you know, I was wrong. All right, let me go over some things really quickly. 108 Stitches Baseball Talk can be broadcast around the world. The audio version of the show of 108 Stitches Baseball Talk can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. Please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We're striving for 1,000 subscribers. Please also comment, like, and share the broadcast. Want to be a guest? Feel free to participate in the chat room. That's one way to get on. And also send your topic ideas to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. And if anyone wants to be a permanent guest, okay, reach out to me by email, and I'd love to talk to you. One of the things that we look for when we add permanent people is we want somebody that has a strong social media background that could go ahead and share this show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and everywhere. Because social media, unlike the days when George and I were in the industry or the stations did it, we really feel that a strong social media background is a great way to get yourself in here on a permanent basis. And I do want to let everybody know that I will be making more sweeping changes after I'm done with my 
writing of the book. So you're going to see a lot of new faces over the next four to six, eight weeks and beyond. So I want to expand this platform to as many people as I can. You know, I love loyal crews, but I also am very open to new faces that provide fresh ideas and are compassionate and passionate about using every tool in their box to promote and be proud of what they do. So take it for whatever it's worth. So if you want to advertise cost efficiently, call me 954-304-4941. We broadcast live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Our website's www.southfloridatribune.com, Twitter at Tribune South. Kenny Ebling is behind the scenes, and she's on here with us tonight. But that said, okay, now that – go ahead, Jacob. You have something you want to add? Nope, nope. Just was I did no, there was someone I was just keeping them quiet. I'm keeping the noise down. Oh, that's okay. You're good. And I'll tell you, Jacob Christner is obviously the newest member of the professor and the pupil, and we'll be uh, adding some good wrinkles to that show as well. All I can say with you two is you need to have like one of those AI smoky things, like the old 1980s newsrooms and stuff like that. Have some smoke around you. You know, have a little bit of that. Have a little bit of the um, the typewriters going. Hey, George, I think Jacob <laughs> needs to be educated about what we went through at WXYZ. Go ahead. <laughs> teletype, teletype, rip and read. I know all that stuff, Jacob. So does Scott. We oh, did, I know. We, we prepared sports news back in the day. Rip and read, as they some people call it on the news. Uh, but, yeah, right. Smoke filled, no, the smoke-filled rooms, Jacob, that came from, like, owners and general managers getting together. Right. Right. Yeah, remember that no. smoke-filled room kind of thing? No. Oh, I saw, I, before anything, I saw a little thing, like a little clip on YouTube. Frank Reynolds was getting ready for like a broadcast, and it showed everybody having smoke in there, and then click, click, clack, 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 and everybody cussing, everybody. It, it felt like the old days. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, Jacob? Here's the deal, man. Anytime you go ahead and bring up Frank Reynolds' name, you always score points with me, pal. That's all I have to say. I'm good. I'm going to have 40 points by now. <laughs> yeah, you're, hey, you're up there. And, and you're gaining more by the second. All right. <laughs> Two more topics to get to before we get to the uh, real, our, 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 my real toy here on this broadcast. The Iona Braves explode for 27 runs to demolish the Mets Saturday night. Doubleheader, 21 to 3 in the opener. Of course, you wonder if that's an NFL score, anyways. Or <laughs> in the nightcap, which might be two field goals if you're thinking the NFL. The Mets were shut out. For the 13th time this season, and they did happen to win eight to seven with the Braves, but not what Steve Cohen expected this season, right, Jacob? Absolutely, and I'll tell you this: the I mean, the Braves are going to make it 28 to three, but it went to win. So <laughs> hey, you know, it's just it's still. But the but no, the, the the big thing is the Braves are a monster. They are an absolute. I live here. I see this through all the time. It's like. Someone's asked me in their little quote unquote struggles, which is basically a couple of two out of three losses. If they're coming back, oh my God, I, th that's going to be about a 100, 500, 6 win team. They're ridiculous. I mean, top to bottom. I mean, you start with Ronald Acuna, you keep going to the thing. They have like two or three power hitters straight. You go, it, it's just ridiculous. Spencer Strider is going to have a huge playoff. He's, a, he's already. He's already at like 15 strikeouts per nine innings, like an all-time record. Like per nine, he's absurd. Okay, Every right. And then you have Max Freed. They are just loaded to bear. And then what if they would get them? What if they have a chance at Otani? Oh, my God, it's not even fair. That becomes, that becomes the Southern Yankees, you know, be able to get everybody. So, no, I mean, it was ridiculous what they were able to do to the Mets, but they're just that much better. They they will do this to other teams, not just bad ones. They're just the very best in baseball. Okay, we'll turn it over to George. Yeah, that's uh, one of the biggest embar embarrassments I've seen in a long time. That giving up twenty one runs. What a what a sad sad turn of events in New York, involving the Mets. Uh, Cohen is obviously the one that uh, went all in, uh, getting guys like Verlander and Scherzer and. And look at how it's fizzled. Um, and then the, conversely, Atlanta, like you said, Jacob, I mean, what a wonderful franchise that's become. They've always been good. They had some down years, of course, after Bobby Cox left. But they're really, really right at the top of the game right now. The thing is, is they don't want to peak too early. You know, you don't uh, – if you, when, you're, when you're running away with things like that, trust me, we saw it. We saw it in hockey this year. We saw it in other sports, Boston Celtics. 
We saw it over the years in the NBA. You know, those teams that run away, they sometimes fall flat on their face in the playoffs. So they've got to stay sharp. They've got to stay focused. But they've got to also realize that the second season begins when the calendar starts flipping into the month of October. We all know that second season is the one that really, really counts. Not what you necessarily do in the open in the first part, which is the regular season. But Atlanta, I don't see anybody beating them this year, but you never know. The Dodgers are still hungry, and there's other teams out there as well. So, but hats off to Atlanta and what a sad sack the Mets have become. And, hey, the, and the thing is, I had said that the I'd said last year I picked that the Dodgers were going to be out early because of the lulls they would get in different spots. The, I mean, it's not losing that causes lulls, it's just little flat, flat lines that they get, whether it's in pitching, whether it's in hitting. Atlanta doesn't have flat lines. They don't get flat lines. Even if they lose like 11, it's, they still have five. They don't flat line anywhere. You have a bad game, they're still scoring. They have a bad hitting game, they're still two to, two to one. Yeah. It's like they're just, they don't flat line anywhere. They've got everything. And that, the, the Dodgers did not have that. That's the difference last year. Can't want to turn over Jordan. You know, we looked at the Mets earlier this season thinking, oh, this is a team that bought a championship team. Of course, we know how that ended up. They ended up trading Justin Verlander and a couple of other pieces. If you look at the Atlanta Braves, they are a monster right now. They've got great pitching. They've got hitting. they great defense. The only thing that I see about Atlanta, though, is like George was saying, it's – the regular season what can you do in the playoffs are they the team to beat? i would say so right now but once you get into a especially in the division series a short five game series anything is possible but for right now the braves are definitely the favorite to win the world series just because of what they're doing this year so far all right eric you get the final word on this one. Oh boy well, I like to – well, since we're talking about the Mets, I like to – like with how – with like with the Mets, like I knew that like, you know, especially given last year that cracks in the foundation were showing. But with the Mets over the years, and for those who have been, been alive going back going back post-1986, I like to equate the Mets as, as, as like the Saturday – as the old Saturday Night Live sketch, Mr. Bill. He mean, <laughs> they, they mean well, but every time they try and do something, something bad happens to them. In, in the, yes, every time it could, something could fall on him, something could cut him, something could crush him. No matter what, something bad happens to him. To the point now with the Mets, it's almost sad. And given like they called it a repurposing, no, it was a fire sale, Billy. It really was. Which you could pro- actually, you could probably call Billy Upper literally Mr. Bill if you wanted to. Um, but you know, with the Braves though, that is a general manager's dream. Where you have all, where you have a really, really freaking good team, with a bunch of controllable assets who aren't going to be a free agents for a long while, you know, right. you have that for years to come. And don't forget, people, we we you forgot to mention Charlie Morton in that pitching staff. The guy maybe the guy maybe getting up there in age, but man, he definitely he definitely helps that young staff along. Not the ace by any means, but having somebody to lean on him for experience, you know. You got that going for your rotation, so let's not so let's not forget about that. And the guy could still, the guy could still catch batters up with with his um with his Bugs Bunny junk with the best of them. Yeah, well, don't forget. <laughs> yeah, don't forget Brian Snicker is a pretty good manager. Oh, hundred percent. In case you want to know. I mean, yeah, it takes the manager. The manager ultimately has to push the buttons, and you know, you literally have you literally have a general manager's dream. This team right now has no holes anywhere. Nothing. Zilch, this team could be the next dynasty. I think they could be the next dynasty. And most of all, they are very, and I've met a few of them. They are, I've met a few of them, yes. They are class. And after the Wander Franco ridiculousness that's going on right now, eh, I mean, you need a full class team. And then they stay a long time. They're going to be the toast. Well, here's the thing. The Braves, the Braves aren't peaking. They aren't peaking too early. Unlike the Rays, which they did that very, they peaked very early, and we've seen it now because there's a reason right. they're no longer in first in the AL East. The Braves, you know, yes, they've dominated the AL, the um, NL East, which the NL East is not very strong to begin with. So the Braves could easily, they could play baseball with their eyes, they could face 95 plus mile an hour fastball with their eyes closed, and I think they'd still be in first place. Mm-hmm. But well, they, they, they'd still have five home runs. Yes, probably, it maybe even more. But you know, I. But the thing is, you know, Brian Snicker. Keep in mind, he took this 88, he took an 88 win team two years ago 
to the World Series. No one expected him to do that he, with almost this with almost this very same team, with the exception of Freddie Freeman being gone. But shoot, they were put. They replaced him with Matt Olson, who's not a bad player to begin with, with 40 plus bombs at this point. But you know, they they again, they are literally a general manager's dream. They they are the definition of doing your job perfectly, and it goes better than you ever could imagine. Okay. And one more thing I want to get to tonight before we take care of some company business. Okay. Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochi got a standing ovation in his return to Oracle Park in San Francisco. Well deserved. He won three World Series titles in Fresco. And I got to tell you, San Francisco acknowledges its, its sports heroes and is still cherishing Barry Bonds. Well, had to mention him, okay? He's got to be liked somewhere, if he, even if he isn't liked practically anywhere else. But some thoughts, Jacob, about the love that Bruce Bochy is getting in San Francisco. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a reminder of that. It's, that's basically the West Coast version of the St. Louis Cardinals who they give standing ovations. They'll give standing ovations to the towel boy. If he, if he goes over to, if he goes over to like the reds, they just, I mean, they, it's like, and this is the whole situation. And then you, if you're remembered for uh, winning three world series uh, and it's like, and they're going to get that standing ovation considering where it's come, where they've gone. And it's like, and you know, even though Bruce Bochy getting old, you know, there are fans that would say, I want him back. Right. I'd love him. Cause he's still there. So, yeah, they're going to give something like that. And then, of course, here's the thing. The Cardinals had said, I want the Albert Bujol back. They got him to say goodbye. So that's the big thing that a lot of the fans are going to really, especially when they're struggling like that. They basically want their – when they, people are getting older. I mean, I just saw a video of Hulk Hogan this week, and he had to be held up by his own wife. He had to be held up. I mean, even though with the muscles and everything, he, it's, his back is gone. He had to be held up, and, he, and it's like he's 70 years old. And it's like when you watch age, it's tough. You still want to think somebody is um, that young guy, you know, with that kind of gumption. But you know something? We all retire. We all go. We all have our stories and we all go die. And that's the big thing about it. Is we, but so we want to be able to give that the thank you. We want to be able to do that. And, yes, there's always that wishful thinking that they stay young. But, so, but if they don't and they have to get it, thank you for everything. All right, George. Yeah, Bruce Boche is a great guy, great manager. They recognize that. Uh, they had some fantastic years, like you said, in the in the Bay Area. They got good fans, that's for darn sure. And he's a surefire Hall of Famer. That's 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 uh, that's a given in my book. So uh, Bruce is welcome back, and doesn't surprise me at all. He's a great, like I said, he's a great guy. He knows the game inside and out, and has had a wonderful career behind the bench. So I'm really, really happy for him. I've never had anything bad to say about him or write about him because I think he's a class act when it comes to baseball managers. Hey, Jordan. He definitely deserves the hometown welcome. I mean, you look at what he did for San Francisco, three World Series titles, and took him to the playoffs four times. Of course, they lost to the Chicago Cubs in the division series, but either way, he definitely deserves the the hometown welcome because if not for him, they wouldn't have three World Series titles hanging out when he was the manager. And I do agree with George Icorn. He definitely deserves a spot in Cooperstown as one of the best managers to ever manage this Major League Baseball game. But, of course, we know that uh, the Hall of Fame, they don't put necessarily the best people in, but he definitely deserves a spot. There's no doubt. Eric? I mean, you know, what what better manager to come back to um, to come back to Oracle Park? I mean, he's up. He is the reason why the Giants were able to get those get those World Series rings. He's had success everywhere he's gone. People forget though he had aside from that stretch again that that stretch in San Diego, which wasn't his fault. That was you know ownership being the, the then ownership being cheap at the time. But he had he's literally been successful everywhere he's gone. Had that success in San Diego where he took them to the World Series in 1998 where they got absolutely smacked but still um, but then he also but then he moves on he moves on to to San Francisco and and gets them and gets them their worlds and gets them three World Series rings yeah, and then he also was able to take them back in 2016 to the playoff you know and given the success he's having in Texas now you know but you know Bochy deserves every every positive thing ever every positive thing you can have in San Francisco they remember you for winning from winning one, 
Two, you're a legend. Three, you're immortal. Bruce Bochy is plenty immortal in San Francisco. I mean, but you know, but still, the guy, the guy is still plenty young. I mean, given how successful the Rangers have, the Rangers have been this year, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he feels a lot younger. And judging how a, a while back he went after the umpire, don't worry, he hasn't aged. And you know, but all, all, all in all, you know, happy to see Bochy get his due. The guy's going to get into the Hall of Fame. And there is no one, and nobody is more deserving of of the love and support from San Francisco than Bruce Bochy. No question about it. The only thing I'm going to add to this is this: Bruce Bochy deserves everything he gets in San Francisco. But just say he does win one in Texas, mm. the Texas Rangers. Okay. Well, it'll be without Jacob Degrom. That's for sure. Uh, well, oh, Ron, and that too. Ron, well, we'll get Ron Washington. There. Ron Washington nearly did. Yeah, but yeah, right. Ron, nearly. But let's just say Bruce Bochy breaks through. Not only will he be iconic, okay, in San Francisco, but Dallas winning for the Texas Rangers, a team that has gone through two stadiums where you would get killed in the summer playing in them. Now they got their third and last part. Can you imagine how well honored he'll be in the metropolitan Dallas that's, area? That's one of the – one of the longest droughts, Scott. Yeah, the Washington Senators slash Texas Ranger drought. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It just makes you wonder, as if he isn't already a Hall of Fame man- manager, just add a world championship to the Texas Rangers, and then you take Iconic to an entirely different level. He'd be All one. right. He'd just be imagine one. if he did the Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh well, you know, uh, you know <laughs> that'd be that, uh, that's that's what um that's that's what um, Mark Mancini dreams about every night when he goes to Bill yeah, Verdon. Yeah, Bill yeah. Verdon recreated, and, and won't forget Ralph Williams. He's there too. But no, if he did it for the Pittsburgh Pirates, I'll be re- rewriting for that song, searching for a miracle nine million times over. We, we would never have more any detail than that. All right, all right. Next thing I want to get to is something I'm really very feel very good about, and that's this. Okay, pundits. Pundit's opening act was Thursday, August 10th. And and I am proud to mention that they are part of the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network and South Florida Tribune. My expectations of it are it will hopefully produce writers and editorialists like one of the guys on my screen who likes to write. <laughs> but what we're also Jacob's going to preview next Thursday show, the 24th. And also, I want to give an update on the audio providers that we have so far. We've got Spotify. We have Apple. We have Google. Uh, Sleeper is Geo7. I think we have about 10 or 11 of them so far. Those are the four that stand out, and I'll continue to convey updates as we get you know, along. But the fact that we have Spotify, Apple, and iHeartRadio on top of our Spreaker platform and Geo7 my goal is to make sure that Pundit's Pundit, like every show that we do on this platform, has an audio reach, which I think is just as important as a visual reach. Because mm-hmm. let's face it, not everybody can go out there and watch it. So use your mobile devices, to go in your favorite podcast place, and look for Pundit's Pundit, and you're going to find that we own it here at the Tribune. Obviously, it's Jacob's show, but we just want to make sure... That Sideline Sports did an outstanding job building this show from scratch and giving it a platform. And I'm so proud of our partners at Sideline for doing it. But my goal here is to make sure that we take Pundit's Pundit and do everything in our power to try to transition it to places it hasn't been so far. Jacob, what do you want to add to this? I'm going to bring, I'm going to add something like this to it. I had Jordan before and stuff like that. So Jordan knows this whole thing. And Eric, I don't know if you've seen the show yet. George is on it also, and I really, I'm really proud to see George and Scott on this. The, all the experience right there, I feel proud. I've always had been proud to have you around, Jordan. Everything, but Jordan Long knows what I expect on something like this. This isn't meathead the ball. This isn't scores. This isn't I'm mad at you. You know and stuff like that. I'll give an example. We're doing a, the one next week. It's called Kung Lee versus UFC. The um, it is the uh, class action lawsuit about pay, pay for fighters. We talk about those type of things. We talk about women's, uh, the women's sports that are advancing in this world and how, uh, how high it's getting. We get to the story before it gets bigger sometimes. We'll check something and we'll get to it before it's bigger. And then we say we've talked about it quite a few times, quite a few things. We talked about, remember the ABA deal before, Scott? 
Remember the ADA yeah. thing we talked about before they got, before they had their um, before they had all of their Hall of Fame stuff, and then they got it. I'm not saying it's all us, but we talked about those things like this. We don't, we don't bring up meathead. We are bringing up the the future of sports. What's going on? I really believe that, that, that okay, we might be a lower we might be a lower produced version of outside the line, but we're a better version. We're a better version because we have no political aspect. We talk everybody. Talk everybody, give everything. Jordan has been a big help with it. He, he, Jordan gave me a big story on the, the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, we have what they were doing with the Kentucky Derby. He's fine that. Jordan understands. Everybody here, I mean, George has given me a story or two. Just what he's getting. He's done it already. <laughs> he's gave me a story or two already, which is awesome. Scott's given to give the pile. And it's like, we, this is about the future of what's going on. This is about, this is all streaming. This is going to be the, like I said, the end of football um, the, in the inclement weather. The end of t- terrestrial TV. We're going all streaming pretty soon. This is those types, and we talk about it. We don't have to fight, argue, yell, scream. We don't have to be Stephen A. Smith times five. We don't have to do all that. We discuss. We talk. We get the stories out there. We take all this type of thing. That's what the Pundit's Pundit is, and I'm proud of it. Let me add a couple of things that we're hoping to add to this show as time goes on. First of all, we made the decision to add Candy Ebling to the show, uh-huh. as well as Jennifer Matthews Lewis. Oh, now I'm gonna miss. I miss her too. Yeah, I, I love it. Her. But those two ladies are going to provide an incredible element. The one thing I do want to see out of Pundits Pundit, well, it will not only be a sports type of show. There will be non-sports related topics as well. I think it's important that you show a lot of versatility, so that way we can gain a larger audience. And that's where, you know, the depth chart that we have right now, okay? And, you know, there might be times I have to promote my book. There might be times that George has to do things. But when you got seven strong, for gosh sakes, there's no way you can have a bad show even if you wanted to because of the quality of the talent that we have here. But the reality is, is this, okay? Jennifer and Candy are going to be huge. And obviously, Jordan, you know what it's like to be on this show. So Mm -hmm. nobody has to tell you anything. Jacob, George, and I have worked together on the Sports Exchange, Basket Bros, and, you know, Denzel is Denzel. The guy's phenomenal anyway. Oh, so, right, and, I, and Denzel's our hype guy. He is, yeah. he is the hype machine. He is, <laughs> he is the hype machine. He is, I, I like to say I hype things. He blows me away. Oh, oh yeah, he, he blows does. me away. <laughs> the, the one thing about Denzel, too, that I'm also going to be doing, and I talk about things that he's – there's a strong chance he's going to be – the third or fourth member on Professor and the Pupil. Because, again, when you have Jacob, Denzel, and I that work together, you know, I mean, you can't have – when you work with three guys or you know what everybody's going to talk about the way they are, you have to go out there and keep continuity with what's worked. And I think that's the thing that as I continue to develop, redevelop this format, in addition to what my responsibilities over at Eagle Communications – as president over there to build that broadcasting division from scratch, but also continue to enhance what we're doing. That's what I love about the challenge. So, you know, I'm going to mention Candy Evelyn. Great point, boy. And she nailed this one. Go ahead, Jacob. You oh, read I wanted story. to bring, and yes, you do. You bring the women's perspective and women okay. know more about sports than ever than they ever have. And the, you look at the thing, look at sport, look at women's basketball. Say this, George and Scott, watch a women's basketball game. How many women do a push shot like this anymore? They're all, I mean, they're shooting 25 feet like this, like men. Yeah, and we I mean, talked women, about that up. last show, right, right. Yep, yeah, we brought this. And here's another this little story here, and we brought this up. It has to do with the thing. It says, R- Royal star Bobby Witt Jr. raced for an inside the heart park home run in 14.3 seconds tonight. Second fastest, fourth fastest in history. 14.3 seconds. We have had, and uh, Jordan knows this too, we've had discussions on the, how athletic people are getting and the type of training there is now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and you know something? 14.3 in the next year or two will be blown away. There'll be like a Ronald Acuna that just blows away. Who, could, who knows? It could be this year. There's always You don't know. It's everybody is the most athletic you ever see. Records will fall and they'll go bust, but we're going to be there for it. 
Well, the biggest thing that we I, I want to emphasize here, okay, is our chat room is going to be active with at least so far seven people, which I think is more than enough as far as the depth chart. But the ideas that go in and out of that chat room here, everybody's idea is as important as everyone because we know at some point I don't ha we don't have stupid people on this platform. We just don't. I, am I bragging about you? Darn right I'm going to brag about it because I know what I've got. I do, and I'll continue, as I mentioned throughout these last couple of shows tonight, to find the best people and continue to bring on guests in some situations where I need to on not only this show, but other shows that are, are strong. And I'm not going to get into a list of our shows. You want to do that, go to our www.southwordtribune.com and look under the broadcast, WSFT broadcast. You'll see them all there. But I'm proud of what we have here, and my goal is – you know what? We're going to be, we'll take the week off because, you know, I want to make sure we provide more audio providers and an update next Thursday when we go on. But I, I am going to take a five day break here in an effort to try to reconnect with my Detroit connections. George knows that we're certainly going to have business meetings with a few of them up there. But I want to come back fresh as much as I'm capable of. And I don't know whether that's going to be, who knows what the heck that is, anyways, to make sure that, you know, we're loaded on both the South Florida Tribune as well as Eagle Communications. And I'm proud to be the president of that broadcasting division with Dr. Edwin Hernandez. And we have a lot of plans. And, of course, just so you know, over the summertime, I want everybody to know that the release of my new book is called Adjusting to New Media, which is something that I'm working on right now, as well as a textbook for people in my class. But pundits funded to me. And when I looked at the sideline sports group of shows, I'm not here to take their shows. I don't want to do that. I don't want to feel like there's anything I'm doing to jeopardize a good relationship at all because I've got my, enough on this plate. But when the opportunity came that Jordan was interested in changing nights and he wanted George Icorn and I, a couple of veteran hands, and he, we had an opening on Thursday, J.B. Ellis was very respectful of that. I said, any way that you can promote it on Sideline Sports, you do it. He did it successfully over on LinkedIn. And J.B. Ellis is one of the best people mm -hmm. that – I can say I work with. Now, I will say this, okay, here live on this stream, Jacob, George, Jordan, and Eric are all in my upcoming book. All of you guys are in it. Uh, there's a mention from everyone because I think everybody that makes a contr positive contribution to it deserves to be recognized. And I'm so proud that I, and I, to, to have you guys working alongside of me. So, folks. And, I, we, and we appreciate it. And I wanted to say this about Jen. They just had on there. They have a show, the Three Chicks in a Pod. They just had the, the they just had the um, you know, the lady that helped bring down Dan Snyder, oh, and, uh, and, wow. and, uh, and helped change with the Redskins. They had that on their show. We get these type of people here. We get these women here. We get these men here. We get the best. And then think about that for a second. We get the best, and it's like, and, and better than the rest. I have to say it. <laughs> well, uh, and I'll say this, okay, Jennifer Matthews Lewis. Candy Ebling, Megan Price, Carrie Johnson. They've done a wonderful job there. And, I, and I'm and i very thankful that J.B. Ellis got Candy connected with those ladies. You know, these ladies are a bunch of sisters as far as I'm concerned, the way they go after things. Mm -hmm. And now, and, and I am open to even Megan and Carrie coming on if they ever want to. But we know that Jennifer and Candy, and along with what we have here, or what we have, a, you know, any way that we can provide any kind of mutual, you know, stuff i'm all for it but I, i'm really satisfied with the lucky seven that we have and i think you and denzel and george we can all agree that we have seven of the best that will provide different viewpoints all the way around so you know so we just want to make sure we spend a little bit of extra time here to let you know that to me every show that we're going to have going forward and i'm proud of what we've done but I'm a perfectionist. Uh, to me, I hate losing. Anybody knows that I'm the most intense individual on the planet. And losing is not an option. And when you surround yourself with good people, you're only as good as what you have on the air. I don't believe that any one person can take over a show, you know, and just think that they're going to carry it on their back. I want to make sure there's depth across the board and that there's no interruption at all across the board. I believe that everybody on a show deserves the same respect in terms of getting their opinions out there in a respectful manner. And I think those are the things that we're striving to improve here on the network. And that's why I'm very selective of who I bring on and many of whom I, who I retain and whom that may not be going with the program. 
well, you know, it's just not a good fit. But I don't have a lot of those, but you never know someone along those lines walks into the picture. So I know I've spent a lot tonight on both of our shows talking about talent. But you know what? Again, you want the best talent that you can, and you want cooperation and chemistry. And we, our goal is to ed educate and inform everyone. And I think we all share those visions here on our network. Any closing thoughts, Jacob? Well, I'm just proud to be able to have this. And, I, and this is not a disrespect on sideline sports. I've had three years, and I'm still been with them with uh, three different shows, two full-time and one part. I get uh, I get on the, off the bench to the gauntlet and stuff like that, so, which I was on Friday. So it's like I'm still there. It's not that I've left them. But it's like I have a high respect. It's one of those things where it's like we've gone to the next level here. Well, and I want to point out one thing about Sideline Sports, just so you know. Candy Ebling is going to be working more on their website this week and stepping it up. So the South Florida Tribune, just so you know, will be controlling the Sideline Sports website, and we're looking forward to being able to build that up and make sure it's a very presentable site to get whatever content they have on and attract writers that, that may not only be here, but they may also be on that if they play their cards correctly. George, any closing thoughts? No, I'm just uh, excited about it. I, I'm glad you guys... Uh... Yeah, we're able to accommodate my schedule. I'm so happy about being part of it. I, I look forward to it. And, uh, you know, a sports magazine on the air is what I think of when I think of Pundit's Pundit. I think about the, the days back when Scott and I used to, and Phil Guastella used to have the show, and we had a six-hour show, but we treated it as a sports magazine. And examining, like you said, Jacob and Scott, the issues that some people won't examine, they won't take the time, or they're afraid to touch. But no, we have a range of topics that will excite everybody, will make people more intelligent on sports and society as a whole. So I'm, again, looking forward. I thank you very much for having me be part of it. And there is, and I'm appreciate, and I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, and I'll say one more thing. This, everybody here, we all might vote the same or vote different. Just going to bring this part up. This, we're going to think differently. We're going to have all this differently. The more, the more popular we get with this thing, the more we'll get uh, the people. You get your haters. You get all that. I understand that. Understand this. I'm not, we aren't going to get out of a subject for any reason just because it's too conservative, too liberal, too anything. This is the world. We're going to stop this whole everything is political crap. Oh, let's not say it because we might offend people. Uh-uh. It's got to stop because this world is changing and people are just going to need to start living with it. Yeah, which is a good reason why we, when he came up with our logo, came up with the world and then funded, funded in it to validate what Jacob just said. Jordan, any thoughts? I will say that, you know, a lot of shows are just one-sided and we don't have discussion. The nice thing about Pundit's Pundit is, yes, we may have all different ideas. And like Jacob said earlier, it's not – you know, yelling, screaming, we sit and have a discussion and that's what the world is missing. So definitely tune in because we actually sit and discuss, you know, sometimes hard topics and all going to be sports, but we sit here and discuss and it's the greatest thing. We don't get in arguments. We understand each other. It's the best thing. I'm a, I'm a poor moderator. If I see any yelling and I keep th and things get out of control and I'm not going to do that. No way. Uh-uh. Because I'm harder on myself than anybody. Anybody that's been around me, George, a long time ago, no, I can be really hard on myself. Eric, I know you're probably not going to be in funding a lot, but give me your thoughts about what it is because you have other responsibilities that are every bit as important that I'm going to get to in just a moment. Go ahead. Well, you know, first off, you know, I like the, uh, you know, the creativity in the show. I like how uh, it's not pulling, it's not pulling any punches, meaning like if you want to offend the people, so, uh, so be it, you know, but, you know, like as far as, far as, um, too liberal or too conservative. All I got to say is, in the words of Michael Jordan, they all buy they buy sneakers too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And and I should point out though, Eric is a part, huge part of what we're doing because not only does he contribute very well in the baseball show, but especially this fall, he's going to be a very key part of Fire Up Wisconsin. So there's a lot of important news out there, and Candy Ebling will be on and. We're hoping to have Smoke and Jeremy be on as well. I think the three should make a very good tandem. But we'll, I'll as we get further to that point, I'll make the official announcement of the exact crews 
on fire up Wisconsin. Well, but this is one of those kind of things where, you know what, every now and then we want to let everybody know what we have planned going ahead. And, you know, as we post them on social media, it's vitally important to realize that what we do, you know, we're methodical about what shows we need to do. And look at Candy, I believe she's like fired up about this. Say like, <laughs> Eric, you and her. It, of course. It will revive. Fire up is kind of like Carry On, that British film series. Yeah, there's, fire, right. there's 50 fire, off, fire ups, just like there's 50 carry ups. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? This has been a fun edition of Underneath Stitches Baseball Talk. So before we get out of here, and I have to be at the airport in about six hours. Okay. I'm going to let Jacob, Chris, or uh, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Oh, I'd never do anything. I'm going to no. <laughs> um, Sunday mornings. Sunday mornings now, the professor and the pupil and pupils. They, they, we, we, I mean, what you'll have with that. I mean, that's Saturday, Sunday morning. Mondays is the um, is the show with Denzel. It's the wrestling show called Off the Top Rope. It is the Sniper and the Pundit. Um, and then here once in a while, back up, just depending on the time. Uh, Tuesdays off. Wednesdays, two shows now because of the Thursday. Two shows. It is uh, South Fort, It is uh, Sports Exchange and it's Confidential on Sideline. Right. Thursdays, one show with Pundit's Pundit. And then on a backup, I'm a backup on the bench with um, with the gauntlet whenever they need me. So, and then working on, the, I've got a couple of scripts I'm working with, and we'll see what's going from there. All right. Now we know Candy Evelyn, you know, one of the future topics that her and Eric will talk about will the Milwaukee Brewers stay in Milwaukee. I don't know. We'll get, we'll talk about that later on, but just a little something she's putting out there. George, you're going to go last. So go ahead, Jordan. You can find me here on 108 Stitches every Tuesday night. I also have a blog that I write Mondays through Fridays and sometimes with podcasts too at sports-scoop.com. You can follow me on Twitter at sportscoop one I am going to have a sports show. I'm still in the works on that, so be sure to listen here and watch here for more details on that. All right, Eric. Well, you can find me on my Twitter at Sports Team News, or you can find me on my blog at bellyupsports.com, where, I, where you can read about what I'm saying about your team. All right, George. Author, two authors here, Scott and me. <laughs> Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air is my book, uh, all about the history of sports casting in Detroit and Michigan. And uh, there's a link to purchase the book at the end of my column, which is at the Motor City Tribune and under the South Florida Tribune, of course. Also, you can reach me at gicorn at yahoo.com. And at Twitter, or X as they call it now, Sand G Sports 99. And you can find me on 108 Stitches and Pigskin and Sports Exchange and Pundits Pundit. Glad to be part of that. And uh, uh, Scott, you know, I, I appreciate you being in that book of mine with Muhammad Ali and Jimmy Connors. And I know how excited you are, too, about getting your book out there, because I know you spent a lot of time writing and preparing for that. Thank you, George. And definitely looking forward to seeing you in a couple of days. And for sure, I always like going back to my neck of the woods, even if it's for a few days. And it's going to be a good trip. It'll still be a busy one and it'll go by fast, but I'm okay with that. Uh, some information one more time for us. As you know, 108 Stitches Baseball Talk is being broadcast around the world. The audio version of this 108 Stitches Baseball Talk can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcast. Please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We're striving for 1,000 subscribers. Please also comment, like, and share the broadcast. Want to be a guest? No problem. Participate in the chat room or send your topic ideas to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. If you want to advertise, cost efficiently, call me at 954 304 4941. We broadcast live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. My website, www.southfloridatribune.com. Twitter at Tribune South. Candy Evelyn is behind the scenes. And I'm also going to be working with Dr. Edwin Hernandez on a lot of projects as well. So I'll go back to the comments before we call it a night. And where are we at without well, Candy Evelyn? Look at that. There's it there. <laughs> she's going. So, I love it. Oh, I'll tell you. She's the greatest. There you go. Got to get those up. Subscribe and hear it from the boss. There you have it. Good stuff, Candy. So, meanwhile, great. Uh, really delighted with the effort everybody provided tonight. And you know what? We're going to be 
back on schedule next Tuesday night for 108 Stitches Baseball Talk, as we will a lot of things that are going on. So on behalf of Jacob Christner, George Eichhorn, Jordan Long, and let's see, hold on one second here. <laughs> and Eric Katz, my name is Scott Moore, and all the great people. I thought are- Eric was the one barking. <laughs> <laughs> and, all, and all the great people that participated in the chat room we want to thank you for joining us on this edition once again of 108 Sitches Bait Talk and we will see you next week have a great weekend everybody